I'm going to talk about something today that I don't think is discussed enough, and this is a comparison of lights, which obviously there's many of them, but I'm going to be looking at it from a professional's point of view, and I'm also going to be looking at it from various different types of professionals' points of view. So what I've got here, I've got three lights. I have got the brand new Aperture 600D, which is the non-pro version. I have got the Wheelight Ninja 20, and then I've got a small rig light, which is called an RC120D. Despite it being called a 120D, it's a 150 watt light. This is a 200 watt light, and this is a 600 watt light. Now all of these lights do these weird things like the flickering light bulb and all that jazz, which no one seems to actually need, but I think there's some other important stuff which people do not discuss here. So we're gonna look at each of them, see who they're for, who they're not for, because sometimes throwing money at the problem isn't the answer, and sometimes it is. Now obviously this one here is a 600 watt light, which is more powerful than the 200 watt, which is more powerful than the 150 watt. That's a given. The, the amount of wattage you need is specific to you. I just don't happen to have three lights from different brands which happen to all be at the same power. So we're not looking at the power or the, the quality of the chips because that, that's really a different discussion altogether, which we may have one day. But for now, we're looking at some other key things. So starting over here with the small rig. The small rig, these all have like their own little apps and all the rest of it, is particularly cheap. This is a 210 pound light. You can mains power it, and more importantly, you can bang a V-mount battery on it. Now this is an important spec, because the Wii Light 20 over here, this one, this one you can't put a battery on it, it's mains only. So although this is more powerful and slightly more expensive, this one has a better option here. And build quality, especially for professionals, is very important. If you're a professional or you work in the grip industry or you want to rent kit out, these two here, these will not do you very well. They, they'll be replaced all the time for breakages. They're not designed for robust professional work. If you run a small media production company and you're traveling in the little Kia Picanto like I do, this will be fine. If you're projecting them into a van from the top of a loading bay, which also I do, you're gonna want the 600D over there because that can take that level of abuse. So looking back at the small rig one, the construction's okay, it's all a bit, a bit loose, but not too bad. It's got great ventilation. The cables are of medium quality, which is important because a lot of these video cables, that is weird three pin, nine pin, 12 pin, bizarre different little like options going on. It's important to be able to have good cables so you're not constantly looking for them. The other good thing about this is when you have the V-mount on here, it stops the cable being tugged. Now this is a real pet peeve of mine. If we just pull this one to one side, see this cable here, nice and loose, that's good. The major design fault for something like a Wii light is this. The cable is like a, you've got to do some weird like knot tying thing which is then a pain in the ass to get off. And then you've got this one here, which got a gaffer tape to something because there's no mount. Now this is not something that's discussed in spec sheets, but this is very important. This here, absolutely fine for home use because you're not going to rag it like that. But if I use this on a job, I know that my assistants will not do that every time or if we're in a rush to break down sets. You know, the cables are particularly cheap and flimsy, but then you're getting 200 watts of light for 300 pounds. So that's not too bad. You could buy three of these for the price of one of these and you'd still have change left over. But for me, looking at things like the quality of the cables, also the type of cables, it's another good three pin, which is becoming more standard, I guess. Um, from a photographer's point of view, it's just weird. We just like a nice kettle lead. Um, but yeah, these things matter. And this here is just poor design. And a lot of lights have this. And if you're looking at a light to use over a long period of time, having a brick that just like flails in the breeze, that's not particularly useful. Now, once you start spending big money on a light, so these are just over a grand, these are 1,300 pounds each. This is the non-pro. The pro version's actually lighting this, that's about two grand. Um, these here, the cables, they are built to last. These are like rental house quality cables. You'll notice as a stills photographer, if you go to a rental house, they have the following options. Pro photo, bronze color. Now, it's not because they make the best spec lights, which they do, but it's also because they make the best built lights. The build quality is so good that you can trust that if someone drops it, it's probably okay. 
and we're regularly hammering out reflect. I'll show you. This is a bronze color reflector. Look at look at the state of this. This has had a hard life. This is about 30 years old, and it will continue for another 50. If I was to sit on a cheap Bowens reflector, that'd be the end of it. They just melt in half. So if you're deep into your professional career as a content creator, video creator, stills creator, then perhaps you're starting to go, well, do you know what? I broke 10 of these cables and they're a pain to replace because they need their own bizarre, what's this switching adapter called? Model FJ SW20293600 6380 adapters, which are a nightmare to find. You've got to get on Alibaba and order 50 of them you know, that might become a problem. And you go, do you know what? It's not about more light or better light. It's about the lights working because these cables are robust. And also it's got this nice mounting system here. So when you spend the extra money, you get your nice little pack here with all your bits on it. There's an app that connects to it. You can bang V-mount batteries onto it. And the best thing about this, and obviously this costs more money, you can charge your V-mount batteries on this whilst it's running off the mains. So you can plug this into the mains, bang two V-mounts on here and it will charge them. So you're constantly charging whilst you're going, which is really useful. If I was, and I'm not, in a video production company, I would have these loaded up with V-mount batteries 24 seven. So we're mains, we can unplug them, move them along. The V-mounts will then cover the power, plug it in, they'll recharge. It's a really useful bit of kit. Now all of these currently come with these hyper reflectors. As a stills photographer, I hate these. They cast a double shadow and it's because of this design bit here. You see where it starts off straight and then cuts out? That creates a double shadow. They all come with them. They all have various designs. They're all different, but they're, it's the same, same concept. The metal used in this one is better than the metal used in the small rigs one. The small rigs one's better than the wee lights one, but it's marginal gains really. I mean. I can see their use. We often bounce these lights here off a of V flat. If we're doing video work like this, I mean, today I've got a huge soft box, but often we'll just point it here. I've got a bit of foam core at the side, we'll bounce it off there. Having a hyper reflector is useful for that, but not much else. So who should buy each level of light? Because it's not a simple case of going, I need 600 watts, let's spend two grand because you can get 600 watts of light in, in all of these different brands at different price points. We're looking at build quality, and it is the most overlooked reason for purchasing a particular bit of kit. If you're working from home, or if like me, my YouTube rig, which I'm shooting this on, it has a cheap Godox light attached to it, which is like 200 pounds. The build quality and the cable quality is awful, but it never moves. It's attached to that stand, the cables are zip tied to the stand, the whole thing is just a single entity. At that price point, that's fine because I do not need the robustness. I do not need the build quality to be able to take abuse. It's just not, not part of what I want. And then perhaps if you're starting to shoot out in location, you might start to think, well, do you know what? We need to make sure we don't have these faults where the cables yank down because whilst we're setting up in a rush in between sets at some point, these are just gonna be left to dangle. These are just gonna break. We need something more robust like the Aperture Light or the Aperture Pro lights. We need that extra bit of functionality. Now, speaking of functionality, you might also go, well, do you know what we need a, that was good timing. We need a DMX system so we can put these into a board and th these offer that sort of stuff rather than controlling it from an app. It's not as simple as going, this one here has a better COB chip. This one here has more power. There's also the argument to be had. These lights here, the Aperture Storms, the 600s, these are massive, these weigh a ton. I only get these out on days like today where I'm filming 15 YouTube videos in a single sitting. If I'm doing a one-off YouTube video, I'm not cracking these out because they're big, they're heavy, they come in huge cases, they're a pain to transport. I'll just use my little Godox over there for 200 pounds because it's light, it's small, it can leave, always leave it set up because it doesn't cause any issues. So there's a lot more to consider when looking at lights apart from the spec sheets. And I think, although we've not covered everything in great detail, I think it's important to know these things and important to have that, that mindset of, right, what exactly am I getting here? What's the build quality like? What's the cost per use? Now I'm a big cost per use fan. Um, I'm wearing Blundstone shoes. I wear Doc Martin shoes. I use a Billingham bag. I use think tank bags. I get my clothes from certain shops where I know if I wear them 500 times, it's cheaper than buying a cheaper item. So the jacket I wear, the shirt I wear, the t-shirts I wear, I choose those based on how much they cost per use, not how much they cost. Now that is a privileged position to be in, because often cost per use stuff is expensive. My Billingham bag was like 350 pounds, but it's lasted me 15 years of daily use. So really it was very cheap, but you need to have that cash up front. 
This Aperture Stormlight, cost per use, will be very good, and I can tell that just by feeling the cables. But you have to have the £1,300 up front to be able to buy that. This one here for £300, I know for a while this will be broken by the end of the year if I used it. Maybe I'm gonna take this cable out now because it's gonna be broken before that, if not. I mean, look, the cable's already gone, and I've not even turned the light on yet. So these things do matter. If you have the cash, it's worth investing in better build quality rather than higher specs. And just because two lights claim to do the same thing, it doesn't mean you're getting the same bit of kit. There's loads of videos going, we tried this Godox Light Versa Pro Photo one, they looked exactly the same. Maybe so, but give it five years of hardcore professional use and I bet you will be in a very different position. And I know that because I've had Godox speed lights. I used to be a wedding photographer back in the day, which I try and keep secret nowadays. But we bought the Godox flashlights. All of them, all of them melted. And I mean actually melted. I'll see if I can find some one day to show you all. They melted, they've stopped working. The, the color temperatures just went blue. Like all of a sudden flash was blue. Whereas the Canon 580 EX2s we're using, they just consistently fired until we blew the tubes, which took a long time to do. But yeah, the Godox ones, yes, they were cheaper, but they weren't in the long run. I reckon I went through 20 to 30 Godox speed lights to four Canon speed lights. And it actually cost me more in Godox kit. Now, of course, if you're not a pro and you're not hammering kit every week, that might not matter. I've got some Bowens heads over there that I used when I started out. Those Bowens heads were fine for back then when I was shooting maybe, what, a thousand images a week and flash? That's all I was doing. But now when I'm absolutely hammering it day in, day out, Monday to Friday, shooting still images, and we're banging out 3,200 watt flashes, they would not be up to the task anymore. And in, yes, they're cheaper than the Bron Color kit I use, but over time, they'll end up being more expensive. Anyway, I hope this video has been of use to you. If you have any questions, if you would like to see a version of this on Flash about what the difference is between a, a budget Flash and a premium brand Flash, let me know. And if you want to know more about not just the spec sheets, but the actual usability of equipment, pop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to make a video on it next time I have a day off like this. See you soon. Bye-bye.